Hi everyone, welcome to the simple and multiple regression uh, section of video. This one's a little bit long because the second one's going to take us a little bit longer to get. Um, but if you know how to do a simple one, you can do the, the multiple one relatively quick. So it's just getting everything set up. So first again, hopefully you have the university data set up. And let's go with uh, the easy one first is um, use a regression to see how total applications influence total enrollment. So we need to go get that data. Um, I'm going to create a new sheet to kind of clean this data because um, this one's going to take us a little bit of time and it'll get super crowded. You can do it on the sheet if you want, but you got to be a little bit careful. So I'm going to select here and hit the plus button and then um, yours might say sheet one or something like that, but it's just a blank sheet. And so what we need first for this one are total applications and total enrollment. And so I'll go over to the clean data and again, I'm going to search here. So let's do control, at, uh, control F or command F application so here's applications total so i'll copy that whole column and move it over here and then i need enrollment so i'll go back to clean the data click here and then we'll search enrollment and again um, this isn't nearly as hard when you have a, a very small data set um so here all right and so the goal now is i gonna make this like and so the question that we're asking is so how do applications affect enrollment so essentially our x variable is going to be applications our y variable is going to be enrollment and hopefully that makes sense it doesn't make any sense to, to see how does enrollment impact applications it makes more sense like how do applications essentially transfer into enrollment so what we got to do is um, first uh, a couple bad things about we can't just go into data analysis and regression because we have all these blanks and um, Excel doesn't do that really well. Um, and we can't select whole columns with this. So this makes life a little bit harder. So the first thing that we need to do is essentially get rid of the blanks. And um, there's a lot of reasons of why you might not want to do this off the bat, but for now, I'm just going to just not use that. There's a lot of theory that goes into to how we might replace them, but we won't talk about that. Um, and so let's first, I think the easiest way is to add the filter. So again, you can go to the home page. Uh, make sure you select both of these and do the filters. I like the keyboard shortcut of Control Shift and L, or Command Shift and L if you have a Mac. And then we'll click on here first, and what we need to do is we'll go down, and I just don't want it to show me the blanks, so I'll do OK. And then I always have to double check in here. Let's see if this has any blanks. No, so we're OK. So what we need to do now is let's just take these. We're going to copy them, and then we want to paste them so those blanks aren't still in there. And so what we're going to do is, uh, you could do it on this sheet if you wanted, but I'll go back over to here. I'm just going to paste it here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and I'm going to select paste the values. And notice like um, there aren't any blanks. Okay. And now we can run that first simple regression. So we'll do data, data analysis. So we're going to find regression. It might not be up here for you, but again, these are alphabetical. So we'll select regression and these ought to be blank for you all, but um, we'll see. So what's our Y range? So again, we're trying to predict enrollment. So again, you cannot click the whole column. I think sometimes in Max it works, but for safety, now that we don't have any blanks, that's where I'll click in enrollment, control or command shift. Oops, I'm waiting to do the Y range, Greg. Come on. Here, we'll do enrollment, control or command shift down. And then the X range, um, I always go from the bottom up. So there's only one X, so I'll do control or command shift up. And it highlights them all. Make sure you get that, the titles in there. Because then if you select labels, and um, we'll, uh, again, you don't have to do this, but I, I like to keep things sort of semi-close together. So I'll do output range, and let's put these results, um, let's put them here. You can put them wherever you want, it doesn't really matter. And then it might be good practice. We haven't talked about this yet. Uh, it's in the next video. We'll need them, but we'll click the residuals button. Actually, I'm going to click residual plot, so it'll give us a picture. Um, and I won't talk about it, so we'll hit OK. Then you'll get an output that looks like this. Again, I don't like that this isn't sort of automatically spaced, so I'll usually highlight across and double click so it spaces it a little bit better. Um, and there's a regression output. Uh, I won't spend a whole lot of time talking about this because we talk about it a lot in class, but um, we have our goodness of fit measures that we talk about up here. Um, we can look at joint significance using these two. We can talk about individual significance using these columns. Excel gives us two 95% confidence intervals for some reason. Um, and then we have the coefficients right there. Um, so I'll, that's from the lecture stuff. You can go in and, and plug stuff in um, and go through it. Uh, we won't talk about the plot until the next video. 
All right, so there's simple regression. The whole process is going to be exactly the same for multiple regression, except we're going to have a bunch of different x variables. So let's go and find these first. And again, I'm going to put them on um, this uh, cleaning sheet. So I'm going to undo this filter. I'm just going to clear it, and I'm just going to get rid of these. So I'll right-click and delete. And now what we need to go is, so it looks like percent of freshmen receiving federal um, grant A. So I'll go to um, clean data. We'll type um, all right, percent, something like that. So percent admitted. I'm just keep hitting enter, and so that doesn't look like it's going to be good. Um, let's do aid. Percent of freshmen receiving any financial aid. I believe we wanted um, just federal grant aid. So we'll go back to the clean data and see uh, federal grant aid. So I'll do this. I'll copy. I'll go over here. I'll go to our, our sheet here. Um, I'll paste. And then, again, kind of the next one, um, percent of undergraduate enrollment that are women. Back to this is the hardest part. Um, so, uh, let's see, enroll. And again, uh, this just um, takes a little bit of time. Um, enrollment. Uh, let's do, that's not going to work. Let's do women. Uh, perfect, first one. Percent of enrollment that one. So we'll copy. And sorry this takes so long, but it's just part of the process when we have ugly data here. And then uh, undergraduate enrollment, just add undergraduate enrollment. Okay, now we just saw that one, didn't we? So we'll do this. We'll do enrollment. Oops. Come on, let's uh, start from the beginning here. So here, enroll. enrollment total. Um, we wanted undergraduate enrollment, I do believe, so I'm going to copy this, so go back here and just make sure, yep, undergraduate enrollment, so I'm going to cheat six. All right, so I have my three X variables. It's important that those three are together. Anything that you think influences our outcome of interest or our Y or dependent variable, which in this case, um, the graduation rate within six years, so we'll go back to the, the clean data, we'll select here, we'll say... Um, let's say graduation in yeah, six. So copy again. Yeah. All right. So as long as the y variable and the x variables are all together, so y is here. It doesn't matter. Like you could have a, a column here. It doesn't really um, matter. But uh, as long as your x's are together. So we think these three things impact the graduation rate. And again, we got to get rid of the blanks before we do anything. So I'll do this one on this sheet to make your life a little bit easier and show you how it works. You again have to throw on the filters. Um, oh, you can do it in the data tab or you could do it up in the home tab or control shift L. All right, I'm going to go through and just make sure no blanks are being shown. So again, blanks. Okay. And then I got to go through kind of all of these. Um, looks like we're good there. There. Oops, we don't want blanks to go okay. And now what I'm going to do is just copy these. And then again, we have to right click and paste the values just to make sure that we don't have any of those blanks. And you can see here when I clear the filters, I'll have to do this, clear the filters, um, you'll notice that like the blanks are here, but um, it's essentially it's gotten rid of those observations. So like this is just this. So we have an observation for all of them. And now we're ready. So here's our Y, here's our X's, so let's do this. So we'll do data, data analysis, and we'll do regression. Okay, and then we'll do, okay, so I'm going to first select my Y range. So I'll click here. I'll click on the graduation rate, control or command shift down, hit enter. And then my X range, so I'll click, and then it's just these three, and then control or command shift down, hit enter. And then again, I, I always like to put, make sure we have labels checked. Um, and then I like to, again, put my output somewhere next to, to where it is. I um, mean, you don't have to. This will actually help for Mac people on the residual plots to be okay. But then check the residual plots button. It's just good practice. So then you hit okay. And again, um, I hate that these aren't sort of automatically resized for us. So I'll do this here. And again, that's super wide. Um, it's just, um, but it's good because it's only wide because look at how wide this column is in terms of um, these are our variables. If we didn't check labels, it's going to put like x variable 1, x variable 2, x variable 3, and I have no idea, and, and especially if I leave a report for a while, like what x and y um, likely were. But again, same stuff. It has our, 
goodness of fit measures, uh, overall significance test, our coefficients, our individual significance tests, um, and then later on what we can use are these residual plots. We can talk about those. But that's how you run um, simple and multiple regression um, in terms of like plugging these into the equation and talk about them. Uh, that's kind of uh, what you have to know from the lecture slides. This is just sort of a technical approach. Um, or, uh, yeah, so I hope this was useful. I don't want these to be too long.